TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Hezbollah warns Israel over potential war. The Biden administration is seemingly signaling Jerusalem that Israel remains Washington's most important ally in the Middle East. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan vows to expand his country's military operations throughout the region, including in Syria and Iraq. Miscalculation that could spark a limited altercation between Hezbollah and the IDF could very well lead to a wider war between Lebanon's Iranian proxy and Israel. Speaking from an undisclosed location to supporters in the Lebanese capital Beirut, Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah leveled a direct threat to the people of Israel, asserting, quote, Israel's home front needs to know that if there is a war with Hezbollah, it will see things that it has not yet seen since the establishment of Israel. The Iranian-backed leader stressed, however, that Hezbollah does not aspire to fight Israel at this moment in time, but rather it will react to any aggression directed towards it. He emphasized, quote, If Israel bombs cities in Lebanon, we will bomb cities in Israel. And if it bombs villages in Lebanon, we will bomb towns in Israel. If the IDF bombs our military targets, we can also strike Israel's military installations. Nasrallah went on to highlight that Hezbollah continues to follow present developments and is carefully weighing its decisions, while further underscoring that it will not accept something that will put Lebanon in danger. Nevertheless, the Iranian-backed leader failed to mention that his internationally recognized terror organization systematically stores much of its weapon caches in Lebanon's civilian neighborhoods. It is important to know that the remarks by the Hezbollah secretary general were made at the culmination of a number of Israeli military maneuvers that simulated an all-out war with the Iranian proxy in Lebanon. The first exercise, dubbed Lightning Storm, which concluded on February 10th, focused on improving the IDF's military preparedness against Hezbollah, at the end of which IDF Chief of General Staff Lieutenant General Aviv Kochavi declared that Israel is prepared for war. A second maneuver, a surprise exercise that obtained the title Vered Galil, Hebrew for the Rose of the Galilee, aimed to prepare the Israeli Air Force for a quick transition from routine into a state of emergency. In what appears to have been a signal to Hezbollah, after on February 3rd it fired a surface-to-air missile toward an Israeli unmanned aerial vehicle operating in Lebanese airspace, the opening scenario of the exercise simulated an identical altercation that consequently resulted in an all-out conflagration. <laughs> התרחיש שממנו התחיל התרגיל הזה זה ירי מהקרקע של חיזבאללה לעבר כתמם ישראלי. חיל האוויר נערך לתגובה ובהמשך בוצע עוד ירי לעבר כלי טייס נוסף. It is interesting to know that the surprise exercise also included mock bombardments of approximately 3,000 targets in less than 24 hours. For the sake of bringing the significance of such firepower into context, during the 2006 war between Hezbollah and Israel, the Israeli Air Force struck about 5,000 targets during the course of 34 days. Therefore, to ensure that the Israeli Air Force has the capacity to deliver such a blow in one single day, constant preparedness is crucial. <laughs> הדריכות והמעבר הקצר משגרה לחירום מאוד מאוד ישפיעו על התוצאות בזירה הצפונית. Turning to the United States, where the Biden administration is seemingly signaling to Jerusalem that Israel will remain Washington's most important ally in the Middle East at a time when the United States has evidently altered its priorities on the global stage, shifting its attention eastward to contend with great power competition vis-à-vis -vis China.
Uh, Israel is, of course, an ally. Uh, Israel is a country where we have an important strategic security relationship, and our team is fully engaged, not at the uh, at the head of state yet level quite yet, but very soon. Uh, but our team is fully engaged, having constant conversations at many levels uh, with the Israelis. In contrast to Israel, the United States is recalibrating its relationship with Saudi Arabia. You know, we've made clear uh, from the beginning that we're going to recalibrate our relationship um, with um, uh, Saudi Arabia. But I'll also say that, um, you know, we have uh, uh, Saudi Arabia is in a position where they are defending themselves from uh, from uh, threats from the region. Um, you know, they are uh, they have critical self-defense needs and we will continue to work with them on those, even as we make clear uh, areas where we have disagreements and where we have concerns. And that's certainly a shift from the approach of the prior administration. The White House press secretary went on to voice Washington's outrage over the attack against the U.S.-led coalition forces in Iraq earlier this week, further asserting that the United States reserves the right to respond in the time and the manner of its choosing. Initial reports indicate that the attacks killed one civilian contractor and injured several members of the coalition, including one American service member and several American contractors. And we offer our condolences to the loved ones of the civilian contractor killed. The Iraqi people have certainly suffered for far too long from this kind of violence and violation of their sovereignty. Well, as always, um, the President of the United States and the administration reserves the right to respond in the time and the manner of our choosing, but we'll wait for the attribution to be uh, concluded concluded uh, first before we take any additional steps or obviously have any additional announcements. I will convey to you that obviously diplomacy is a priority uh, with this administration and uh, something that is front and center to our engagement with our uh, global partners around the world. And certainly uh, these calls uh, are evidence of that, uh, but that will always be a part of our strategy as well. It is important to know that according to initial findings per Iraqi officials, the group which claimed responsibility for the strike on the U.S.-led coalition forces, an Iraqi Shiite militant group calling itself the Guardians of the Blood Brigade, has direct ties to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Nevertheless, the Ayatollah regime in Tehran has naturally denied any involvement in the attack. In other yet related news, ahead of anticipated elections expected to be held in Iraq later this year, the United States emphasized in a UN Security Council meeting on Iraq the importance of tackling Iran's destabilizing activities in the country aimed to ensure a conducive environment necessary for the democratic process to proceed unhindered. A conducive environment means that we must address Iran-backed militias and Iran's destabilizing activities in Iraq, as well as the remaining ISIS elements. These groups undermine the public's trust in the government and in the October 2021 elections. They are killing Iraqi citizens and depriving Iraq of much-needed economic relief and foreign investment. No one is immune. Head of the United Nations Assistance Mission for Iraq joined the American call by highlighting that strengthening safety and security is as much about addressing the root causes of extremism in Iraq as it is about the immediate ability to respond to threats on the ground. She went on to urge Iraq's leadership to provide political parties and candidates a free and safe environment. Now, for credible elections to take place, it is imperative that parties and candidates operate in a free and safe environment. The same goes for members of the media. In this regard, recent incidents are highly troubling, to say the least. And with this in mind, I call on all parties, stakeholders and authorities to come together and to, create, to agree on a code of conduct and to, and to allow all Iraqi candidates to operate freely, irrespective of ethnicity, gender, language, religion, belief or background. Turning to the Turkish city of Trabzon, where President Recep Tayyip Erdogan vowed to expand his country's military operations throughout the region, including in Syria and Iraq, after 13 Turkish citizens were executed brutally by the Kurdish PKK organization earlier this week. And while the United States and European countries released statements of condemnation over the refer to executions in solidarity with Turkey, President Erdogan voiced outrage over what he said was a so-called deafening silence from the West. 
tüm dünyanın ayağa kalkacağı 13 masumun infazı hadisesinde gelen birkaç cılız ses dışında Türkiye'nin yanında kimseyi göremedim. Ey Batı neredesiniz? Niye sesiniz çıkmıyor? Neden sustunuz? Sizde böyle bir şey olduğu zaman yaygaralarınızdan geçilmiyordu. Sesiniz çıksa da çıkmasa da biz görevimizi biliyoruz. Bu teröristlere Allah'ın izniyle bu ülkede fırsat vermeyeceğiz. The Turkish leader went on to emphasize Ankara's intention to maintain its presence in areas which it occupied to secure its homeland from foreign attacks while further expanding to regions that have not yet been secured. Bir daha benzer saldırılara uğramamak için de güvenli hale getirdiğimiz yerlerde ne kadar gerekiyorsa o kadar kalacağız. Bir süredir yürüttüğümüz ve önemli mesafe aldığımız harekatlarımızı önümüzdeki dönemde tehditlerin hala yoğun olduğu bölgelere doğru genişleteceğiz. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Iraq in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, and for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.